Testing one two three one two three podcast ten. One, two, three, four. How do I look in this hat? My brother gave me a, a funny analogy of what this hat actually looks like, but I'm going to ignore that because well, I, I just can't get out of my head now the fact that he said it. Got to tell you guys now, and I. Anyway, no, he said it looked like I was wearing a condom on my head, but. See, now it's in your head that idea, and now you're laughing as well, and we're all laughing together about this attempt at a yellow hat I'm wearing. Once again, trying to match. My my color scheme. Is it doing that? <laughs> no, I don't know what it's doing. All right, guys. Do you know what vlog? This is not a vlog, is it? Every time. Anyway, guys, this is podcast 10. And I'm a bit out of practice with the podcasts. I'm so used to doing vlogs. I haven't been a podcast in a long time. Been about a month, guys. But I'm back with number 10. And a lot to talk about. A lot I'm probably going to miss out on, but... A lot's gone on since, you, since the last one. Um, thank you for all the uh, vlog views and subscriptions to my channel and all that but today I'm here for a podcast uh, to bore you or hopefully not bore you but yeah just chat a bit you know have a little chat as you do on a podcast um, nothing too well nothing too serious apart from me almost getting scammed on Facebook um, which I'll get into later um, yeah not made a podcast in a while literally I can't explain why I don't have an explanation really, only that I was focusing more on the vlogs, trying to get more content on the vlog out. Um, made those those music mixes, like videos that have music in them, they're not really music videos. But I called them music videos anyway. Um, started the whole DJ21 thing, if you haven't noticed. Um, but no, I just wanted to create content, vlog style content, really. And that's what I did. Um, just to take a break, why not? Why not? I took a break, but I'm back now. I'm back with another podcast. Um, I don't know how long this one's going to be. I never know how long they're going to be, but here we are. Anyway, here I am. Just trying to explain. I, I, I don't really need to explain, but yeah, just took a break because. Um, you know, when you see something all the time, you can't, it kind of gets a bit monotonous. So I thought I'd take a break for that reason too. Then come back and refresh you guys a bit. In case you got bored. I certainly didn't get bored making videos. That's not what happened. I didn't give up. Maybe you thought I did. Uh, you thought I quit. But I didn't. I'm back. I'm here. I ain't going anywhere. Um, but I think, you know, the key to success is knowing when to take a break and stepping back and appreciating what you've done up until that point what you've done to get there with the work you've put in because a lot of times me personally probably a lot of people too you you know you you get that feeling that you're not doing enough no matter what no matter how hard you're working you get the feeling that you're not doing enough at some point some people just could care less about what they're doing like work wise um, and just literally switch off when they go home and that's it um, but this is different, this is a, a way of life. It's vlog life, baby. Yeah, it's certainly different to the average job. Can't say I've worked a nine to five, From you know, apart from a few jobs here and there. But consistently, no. This is what I'm, I do, this is what I do. Um, why have I said that twice? That's how key it is. <laughs> no, it's just a way of life, my job. And it's not, it, it's too fun to call it a job. Because when you think of a job, you think of something boring that you go to five days a week. But I'm always in the vlog life, always in the YouTube space, thinking creatively. Like, wherever I am, I think, if I don't take the GoPro, I'm like, damn, I wish I took the GoPro. Speaking of GoPros, I've ordered the second one, uh, the Hero 5. I was going to get the Hero 7, but it's just too expensive. So I thought I'd get the Hero 5. It's like a new version. Like, it's, a, it's not reconditioned, it's like brand new. 
I don't know how they still sell brand new ones, but they do. So I'm getting one of them. I mean, it's better to have more than one. You know, one I can clip to my footrest, one I can use to, to vlog, and then I can put the content together, the footage together, and make and add it to my content for a video. You know? So, the possibilities are endless. Of course, I use the DSLR sometimes. Probably not as much when I go out, but more like when I'm at home, just talking to you guys about something on the vlog like uh, my recent, most recent vlog um, but yeah I did kind of forget about the podcast because I, I took a break from vlogging too so kind of like I stopped creating for a bit but like I got so, I had so many ideas o over the time I, I took the break and to be honest I've been watching a lot of Netflix uh, which I'll get into later, I'll talk about the movie that I really like called The Dirt um, in a bit yeah, I almost got scammed on Facebook now, m some of you may have come into this before, you may have had this issue where like you get a message from like a Facebook friend, but they're like, they're like someone that's like maybe no longer on Facebook or you haven't heard from on Facebook for a while um, you might get a message asking you about a, well in my case it was like a government grant, I can't remember the exact name, but I was being asked about this grant by what I thought was a friend of mine on Facebook, um, obviously I, I didn't get scammed, I almost got scammed, but I, I only went to explain the whole story, so they messaging me like, oh yeah, you should uh, go in for this government grant, I saw you on the winners list, they gave me eight grand, blah blah blah, it's free, you don't have to give me your bank account, I was like, Wait a minute, this don't sound real. I don't know, it's real, honestly. They kept trying to persuade me, like, they were like, oh, I'd never, um, I wouldn't make this up, you know? Um, all you have to do is send them 500 quid. I was like, well, first you said it's free, now you said 500 quid. Sounds a bit dodgy to me. And they're like, no, 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 please listen to me, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it went on and on. And they're like, honestly, we'll give you this email, email them, tell them you're interested. Um, but do it straight away and let us know when you get the email, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, so I thought, okay, I don't know about this. Um, and then I've, I've, what I've done is copy and pasted the title, the name of the, the whatever BS government grant you mentioned, the name of it, like, was it a government grant? It was like social media something, but like money the, the government give you to, to broaden your to widen your social media, I don't know, footprint or whatever. Anyway, so I copied and pasted the title onto Google, then first thing that came up was an article about someone that got scammed in the same way, that actually went through with it, and sent them 500 quid, and never got their money back. But in my case, I, I didn't go through with it, because once doing this research, luckily, because literally, most people they target are young people, young, dumb, uh, in my case, <laughs> no, well, I didn't go through with it, but a lot of people do. People believe it because you want to believe that you could get some money for free. Um, but if someone's offering you something for free, just know it's not free and it's BS, probably. Do you know what I mean? Unless you're face to face with someone, even then, I mean, uh, I, d I, I don't know. Just be careful. Be careful. It's a. It's a scary world out there because there's people literally after your money there's leeches sucking the money out of your life literally so that was a bit freaky um, yeah I've heard of other people getting stuck in the, in the same way like having messages from old Facebook accounts but anyway it was a friend of mine who's no longer on Facebook and I remembered that like she left Facebook a while ago so I was like oh, hold on how is this happening but as a human, you like, every human craves attention. Like, it's their natural instinct, so they, they prey on that. So when you're getting attention from someone in your messages, like, oh, okay, what's this person saying, blah, blah, blah. But I ha had an idea, it wasn't her, because the spelling mistakes and stuff and the way they were speaking, like, that's not in her character at all. 
this particular friend of mine that it happened to be. So just be careful, guys. Um, and don't fall in the same trap. I hope you don't, because that sort of thing happens too often these days. Fraud, you know. There's too much fraud out there. Fake people. Too many fake people. I mean, I'm laughing now. I mean, I was laughing at the time as well, but... Almost. <laughs> and I said most people they, they target are millennials. Or young people. So, keep your heads up. That doesn't even make sense. Keep, keep your eyes open, I guess. Be aware. Be very aware. <laughs> but yeah. I want to talk about the Padre football that I've been playing while I've been away. I was in Nottingham last weekend. I did make a vlog about that. Um, that was my last vlog, I think. But yeah, we need to win every game of the last weekend because we're fourth, right? And being fourth is not enough to get promoted. The top two get promoted and third place will feature in a playoff against one of the 10th place team from the Premiership. If you know what I mean. So two two teams go straight up. Two teams get relegated from the league above. And we we can't be first. We can't catch the leaders anymore. Uh, we can't really catch second. Third we can definitely catch. Because they're on 37 points. Norwich that is. And we're on 35. So on the last weekend we, have, we get to play them. So in that game, we'll decide if we go up or down. It'll be a must win for both teams. I mean, if they lose to one of the other top teams, that might help us more. Um, but provided we, we win all, all the other games, and that game, we're going up. Hopefully. Um, just have to do our best, you know. We can do no more than our best and beat the teams we've got in front of us, really. Um, I've been playing in goal recently um, forgot actually how good I am in goal because I had that experience when I was in my ex team winning the Premier League titles and at the top of the Premier League um, and I was taught a lot by my ex captain and coach and playing in goal was like it's different to any other position the responsibility you have um, yeah at the other end you've got to score to win but when it comes to being in goal if you concede a goal and your team aren't I haven't got a goal yet. It's going to make it a whole lot more difficult to win. Because in Pouch of Football, comebacks are a bit... Well, they can happen. It can be like 2-1, 3-2. But, like, you you want to be in the lead, ideally. And then you can take your time with the ball, keep the ball, win throwing after throwing or corner, and just control the game. And I learned that in that team. We were Premier League, you know, title contenders each year when I was there in my ex-team. And... You know, to concede the goal at that level was just, you know, unforgivable. If if you were in a winning position against another big team, you needed every point you could get. So, and we needed to make up goal difference all the time. So now, in in this new team, well, the team I was at before them, my original team, let's just say, um, I'm back to playing in goal. Uh, not all of the time, some of the time, uh, when our main keeper isn't there, and. Well, I got to play in goal against Manchester in Nottingham the week before. But this weekend we only have regionals. But again, against Brighton, the big team. Premier League team, but regionals is like... Only the... Literally, it's regionals. It's the local teams. Not like... I don't know to say local, but like South East. I think. And you've got like North East regionals and different areas. But yeah. There's less teams in that, so more possibility of winning the actual regionals <laughs> we target we, we target that anyway that's our target um, so yeah that was what, what I got up to at football really it's been it's been fun in a lot of banter as well like I mentioned in that previous vlog or the, what, the one after Nottingham the Nottingham vlog anyway I'm only drinking water, don't worry guys. It's not vodka. Or is it? It could be. It could be. You will never know.
but yeah, I've been, like I said, I've been taking this break to appreciate what I've got, what I've done on the vlog so far. All, all the, uh, the multitude of videos. It's just too many videos. <laughs> and when it comes to intros, I'm always thinking of a way to change the intro. Something to add or something to take out. Um, and what music music to use, because I never stick to the same music. I'm always changing that. Um, but there was a point where I just didn't really do intros. I just did just did the Lose 21 logo at the bottom. Like, I don't know, a time lapse and then straight into the video. Uh, but now I'm doing these proper intros. Like, a couple of seconds, well, it's like 10, 20 seconds, isn't it? Even 30 seconds. Just, just too long doing an intro, really. Just get on with the content, really. People don't really care about the intro. Um, I mean, let me know if you do. I mean, I might just shorten them because, or we'll just, just keep them, keep it consistent. Keep the same one, at least for a while, anyway. Like, just so you know who you're watching. Louisy Twenty One forever. <laughs> um, and no, it's just. Uh, it's just knowing what 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 I've already done and what I haven't, and what to do better, what to do differently. Um, it's impossible just to, to overnight know what what you do, what you can do better. It's just the practice of making videos. That was the the overall from the beginning, um, from watching Casey Nice. That the way he explained it is that you just gotta create every day, and in his case, before YouTube. He was great making movies, but spending loads of time on making one movie try and trying to make it perfect. And then when he started vlogging, it was just a way to be creative on a daily basis and hone your skills. Because the only way you're going to learn is with, you know, I know they do say it's quality over quantity, but in YouTube it's more of quantity over quality in some ways. Like, you, you develop your quality as a creator. I think it's like the more you the more you create the more videos you make the more you're gonna learn from what you did wrong and what you can do better and we're all self critics we're all incredibly self critical it's just, just like human instinct in it to say what you could have done better so really I mean and then even like I heard mentions from people that watch my videos like some of my dad's clients they're like where's he gone why is he not making videos anymore they were missing me literally and from that I was like okay I better start making videos again enough with this Netflix and chill every day um, Netflix and chill well I'll get, on, I'll get on to that actually but first I want to discuss McGregor versus Diaz 3 um, big fight Nate Diaz won the first one this was back in 2016 so this is MMA, MMA, by the way, mixed martial arts. So, yeah, McGregor and Diaz have a history of just not getting on, like from their first two fights. So, like I said, Nate Diaz won the first fight. McGregor, McGregor came back and beat him in the second fight, and now they want a third fight. But remember, with McGregor, since the last time he fought against Diaz, he's lost to Khabib. He's He's been well. He was well beaten in that game, that match. And of course, don't forget he lost to Mayweather the year before, in August 2017. So he's a bit out of practice. But he'll be raring to go, like, as always. Diaz is like his number one. He's like arch enemy in in the sport. You know, like, yeah, he'll probably fight Khabib again at some point. But not yet, because he doesn't want to lose again. I guess. But yeah, Nate Diaz McGregor. It's gonna be a big fight because the rivalry is just so intense because they're both crazy characters and like big characters, if you know what I mean. So it's not like one's quiet and one's outspoken. They're both outspoken and you know they'll they'll, they'll say what they like and fight focused. But McGregor, you know, he he plays a few mind games. Bit of banter before before these fights, always in the pre-match press conferences. It's typical. 
but it's fun to watch the the competition. Um, I don't watch that much MMA myself, but when McGregor's fighting, you know, I I don't really wa I don't watch the actual fights so much, but I, I know enough about it. I uh, probably should watch more. Could make that part of the channel in the future. Um, it depends. <laughs> I've got to start watching MMA for real then. M M A. May. It's a tongue twister in it. <laughs> but yeah, I've been watching too much Netflix while I've been away. But the, the only reason I really got Netflix was to watch the uh, biotopic about Motley Crue featuring MGK. MGK played Tommy Lee, the drummer of the band. So, I mean, if you don't know, haven't heard of Motley Crue, they're like one of them. Like heavy heavy rock bands from the I think from the eighties really. Um, you probably know a few of their songs. But yeah, you know like Kiss or Black Sabbath, that that style of like you know, they wear leather leather trousers and all that. And long hair and just crazy crazy band they are, I'll tell you what. I didn't realise till I watched it, I didn't know the story that well. Then watching this I was like, Okay, they're proper rock stars. The rock star life that we all hear about. <laughs> Some of us even dream about. I don't know. It's a bit more more damage to your own body than anything really. But yeah, I was looking forward to this film The Dirt for a long time. The reason why I actually got Netflix. But I I'll get onto that again in, in a minute. And because I also watched Bird Box and that was that could have been better, I'll be honest. It was half a film, if I'm honest. The first half was really good. The suspense, and I, I get why people find it so scary. It is because it, it's what you can't see that scares you in, in the whole thing. But I wanted to see what everyone's so scared of anyway. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you felt, but that's how. I, like the ending as well. Come on, do more for an ending for a film. I mean, I don't really want to spoil it if you haven't watched it. But if you haven't watched it by now, then you're not gonna watch it really. Um, Sandra Bullock was was good, but I'll be honest, I was a bit confused by some of it at the same time. But I, I would watch it if I were you. And then, of course, Roma was really famous because it was nominated at the Oscars, won a few Oscars, I think. Um, not about Rome or Italy at all, about Mexico actually, but like um, around the nineteen seventies, like just focuses on one family. And the there's like two two indigenous women from indigenous tribe not indigenous. No, they're, they're any anyway they're from another part of Mexico, and they work for this family as like maids, and it's like the the story of one of them, like she gets pregnant basically, and yeah I won't spoil that either but pretty sad story in the end, it's just about life really, but better than Bird Box, different. It, again, quite sad at the end, uh, but definitely worth a watch. I mean, depends what type of film you're into. It's black and white the whole film as well, and subtitles, Mexican subtitles. No, I mean English, obviously English subtitles, but they're speaking in Mexican, you know. So, you know, if you if you've watched Narcos, it's the same feel. Like you're going to be reading subtitles most of the film unless you know Spanish. Well, some of it's similar to Italian, but yeah, I still read the subtitles because it's quite a, a detailed film. Um, and of course, this film, The Dirt, was the reason I got Netflix. Originally, I got it for a month and I was going to cancel it after the free trial. But the thing is, I got Netflix like too early, literally, because the film came out on Friday, The Dirt, so like 20 seconds. 21st or something anyway whatever date it was it came out on Friday and, but I got Netflix on the 18th of February so that was too early so it was over the month the free month of Netflix you get so that messed up but I've still got it I've been watching watching it ever since but yeah so then after the long wait finally on Friday it came out the dirt the biotopic of the Motley Crew. Anyway, such a quality film. Just 
just I really enjoyed it in the end. Like I love music anyway, so any biotopic about a band or a singer, I'm straight on it. Like Bohemian Rhapsody is how good that was. But anyway, um, with Motley Crue, I wasn't really a fan. I'm not like a big. I know their music. I like their music. I'm not a fan. Like I, w- I wouldn't go as far as to say I'm a fan as such. But I tell you what, this movie made me a fan. And just that's that era of music was like there was so much going on in that era of music really, eighties, nineties. Um, you know the anything about music gets me. So yeah, obviously I knew I was going to enjoy it. You know, I didn't really know the band's story though. It was refreshing as as a as a film with a story. Um, because it wasn't one I already knew, you know, not like Bohemian Rhapsody or other biotopics I've seen in the past that are of big, big, uh, famous bands or artists. Um, so it was new to me, really, the story. In that sense, so it w- it was like it's a roller coaster of a film, like ups and downs, the typical stuff you see in show business, the drugs, the drink, the sex, the rock and roll, all of it mashed into a great movie um, so it's not like it, it, it was something refreshing it's not like other bar topics which can be a bit repetitive well that lifestyle is normally the same outcome it well it tends to be you know a lot of alcohol or drugs or regret but then a lot of positive things through the music they play and with most of these musicians it's the music that well, that's the one thing that keeps them going. <laughs> um, I mean, but you think about nowadays and the amount of people dying to drugs in the industry still. Um, but these guys from back then, they're still alive. They're in their 60s, despite all the heroin and cocaine and all the other stuff they used. Um, yeah, not a family film. Not a family film. Um, let's just say... There wasn't as that that much of that in Queen. <laughs> but yeah, I recommend it. And of course, I'm an MGK fan, so that was the main reason for wanting to see it. Not not about the band, if you know what I mean, just because to see MGK act in a film. And Tommy Lee's character really did suit him. It's literally the same as him, so, you know, crazy. So they had to get him to play the character just a legendary character really he made the film what it was I think and I think one of the others was um, one of the other actors was from Game of Thrones not that I know my mate told me anyway Netflix don't get addicted like me though I know a lot of people probably are I've been watching too many different series on there. I could sit here all day and talk about them. Um, but I've just started watching... Here we go. I will sit here and talk about them all day. So I'm watching uh, Frontier with Jason Momoa. Aquaman, if you're not familiar. It's like... It's another one of them violent series that I like watching. I- I'm into that. Anything violent, really, to be honest. I don't know why. It's like what I'm actually like on the inside so you know I've been watching Narcos as well um, so it's just typical of me it's just typical of the type of thing I like action a bit of violence <laughs> rock and roll why not why not and of course I've been doing a bit of reading as well in between the anti- Anthony Kalidis the biotopic well biography um, called Scar Tissue um, Anthony Kalidis the lead singer of Red Hot Chili Peppers another crazy rock band and and this book features so many stories of what went on in, in, in their life well in his life and in and around the band if you know what I mean another story full of drugs rock and roll and everything else in between um, so in reading that and then, and then watching this film, it was like similar kind of feeling, if you like. 
even though I'm reading a biography and, and a film's a film. You know? But um, I do recommend that book, Anthony Khalid, this Scar Tissue. Uh, if you're interested in that band, uh, who isn't? I, I mean, everyone pretty much has a Red Hot Chili Peppers song that they will name as their favourite. Like a list. <laughs> my list of their favourites is, of my favourites is ever changing. Like it's, it's di it differs every day. But yeah, so while reading the book, I'm listening to the music. You know, just to give you that feeling of of Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, a, a lot of drugs involved in that story too. Like more than I ever thought or realised like at the time because like I would be like 10 year, 10 year old kids listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers watching their music videos on MTV you know so it's like that band is very much part of my childhood grew up with it if you like a lot of people a lot of millennials probably feel the same depends really but um yeah Netflix <laughs> it's not it's not good if you want to have a life because you end up being on there all the time um, but yeah I'm not going to delete it now I'm going to keep it why not I'm hooked <laughs> watching too many series another series that recently I watched that was really good was um, Afterlife of Ricky Gervais just quality dark humour that you get from Ricky Gervais and a, but a good story and like oh, you know it's if it, anyone's ever dealt with loss it in that sense it hits home but it, there's comedy as well so you will laugh and cry literally watching it if you're a fan of Victor Vase not everyone is <laughs> some people just naturally don't like him uh, I can understand why but I do because like people don't people take everything too seriously now so whatever he says is taken out of context and of course when he did the the Golden Globe speech when he presented the Golden Globes he offended a lot of people so in America they don't really like him but um, yeah over here we don't mind it's you know it depends it's subjective really everything is when it comes to TV but yeah if you do get Netflix know that you'll be addicted to one or more shows of course there's movies on there too this is not a promotion for Netflix this is what I've been doing recently but I still can't believe I almost got scammed it's not something I ever thought would well you always like oh never me not me no would never happen to me no I'm not that stupid I almost was <laughs> almost almost being the operative words my brother's like, oh, you're an idiot. Why, why are you even talking to them? Should have known straight away. Typical. <laughs> and moving on. On Saturday, we went out for a friend of mine's birthday. We went to Camden, a place called Shaka Zulu. A Shaka Zulu being a famous African warrior from, like, 16th century or something. Even earlier, I don't know. Uh, anyway, they named the club after this warrior whatever you want to call him um, and it was it was good but very expensive like if you're on a budget for when you go out I wouldn't recommend it if you're a student I wouldn't recommend it or a young person in general I wouldn't recommend it um, but it was for a friend's birthday um, nine ten of us it was a good night a bit of dancing a bit of drinking good food but like I said too expensive for what you for it's good food though so I don't know no matter how good the food is it shouldn't be that expensive um, anyway I don't know if you've been there but uh, it's good for wheelchair access got four floors a lift um, and we were look well looked after I'll be honest from that that side of it, it was fine uh, I don't know about the table service I mean, we waited about 45 minutes um, yeah, but it was busy. It's like 300, 400 people in there. Like, so, what do you expect, really? But I, w I would go back again, but I wouldn't eat there. I would eat before and then go after. But anyway, that was a good night. We had fun. Um, 
us single lads just acting like fools completely the whole time. What else do you do? Just walking around with our jaws on the floor, like, <laughs> as you do. It's not uncommon for lads to do this. Well, it's pretty typical, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, Camden. Always a laugh. You always see the odd crazy person staggering down the street. Well, there's always, what, there's whole groups of them. And just, yeah. Another thing where you should keep your wits about you. There's a drunk, drunk guy puking on you, you never know. Yeah, but I love going to Camden anyway. So, whenever I speak to any of my cousins abroad, they're like, oh, you're going to Camden. So jealous, you know. Anyone who's come over from Italy, relative-wise, they, they've seen Camden and they've been in love straight away. I don't know why it just attracts tourists. Not tourists, but I mean, like, any of my relatives. They all seem to love it. Strange. It's not, well, it's not strange, but Camden can be a strange place. Like, as it gets dark, the tourists start to leave and the the nutters start to come out. It changes once it gets dark. In the daytime, it's a completely normal urban place. At night is when it gets interesting. If you've never been, I recommend it highly. If you live in London, you've probably been. If you live outside London, probably haven't been as much or at all compared to me in recent years. I mean, I remember I was there in the summer and I bumped into an old school friend, that was weird. Because my brother didn't know who he was and he was like, literally about to punch the guy. <laughs> um, till I was like, no, 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 I know this guy. I'll do you. I'll knock him out. But yeah, I just, I wouldn't say went clubbing as such. Went out, not out, out, but out. <laughs> There's different types of out. There's out down the shops, out to the pub out to a fancy restaurant and there's out to Camden yeah just good um, when you go with a group of friends it's just funny just amplifies the banter really and my cousin came along so he's always the laugh <laughs> um, but yeah on the menu there was like crocodile at this restaurant zebra wild boar obviously keeping up with the the African name with the food. <laughs> I just went for a normal rack of ribs to be honest. I don't, I don't know about crocodile. I hear it's a bit gamey. I wouldn't know. Strange. Strange. <laughs> it's not something you'd eat on the, on the regular day. Go, on, go down the same place. Oh, I bought some crocodile. Some filleted crocodile. Zebra, that's basically horse. Or oh dear. Oh dear. No, but I swear they're like endangered. No, not or like, I don't know, some sort of species you can't kill. But I guess not. <laughs> I guess you can. I, would, I, I wouldn't know what a zebra tastes like. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a good night and I would do it again. Like I said, I wouldn't eat there. Um, but, you know, you, I make the most of these evenings because it's not like we're always, we're always out. Um, so, but as summer comes, we're going to be out more and more, more more pubs, for sure. That's what we normally do. I mean, because on Friday I went to the pub as well. Like, the day after England played the Giants Czech Republic. And it was just packed in the pub. We, we had one drink and we came home. We just literally... Sat outside the pub because we couldn't get couldn't even get in, which is like a first for me anyway. Um, it's a lot more difficult squeezing into a pub with loads of people, so we didn't really stay outside. But yeah, when we go in terms of going to like Camden or clubbing, we don't do that as often. So when we do, we make a hundred percent the most of it. Otherwise, it's like, what's the point? But what's been really getting me lately is all these stabbings in London. There's just too many people getting stabbed. It's not pleasant. <laughs> it's not like... It's not... Well, I mean, it's always been a problem, but now I just hear about it every day. 
literally local to here. There's one like down the, on the, one of the local bus routes, like literally on the bus. Guy got stabbed on the bus up the road from here. So yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with these stabbings, but they're, they're all over the place. It's not to one area. It's not particular to one area. It's like the whole of London. So again, keep your wits about you. Um, just be careful. Just don't get in any unnecessary arguments, because that's how, what it can lead to sometimes. Or you can just be unlucky and literally not do anything, and end up stabbed, just because someone's trying to mug you or something. It's the world we live in. Like it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be the world we live in, but it is. A lot of knife crime. I mean, in America they got gun crime. Here we just got knife crime. It's just as bad. People are dying from it too. And it doesn't seem to be any deterrent, really. I mean, there's less police stations. That's part of it. There's a lot less police stations locally. So by the time you find the police, it's happened. You know what I mean? Um, just because people always like, oh, it will never be me. You know, just be careful. That's what I'm saying. Just be aware or carry a bat. I don't know. But yeah, don't get in unnecessary arguments with people you don't know, literally. Uh, uh, is it that simple? I don't think it's that simple. It's never that simple, is it? But yeah, it's been like a big thing all over the news. Obviously, Brexit, that's continuously annoying us because we've been planning a trip to Italy for Easter. It's not going well because of all the Brexit situation all the things going on surrounding Brexit. So yeah, it's ruining the fun of going on holiday. The anti anticipation. So we have to see what happens. Because we had to apply for a green card to enable us to drive through all the countries to get to Italy. Because of Brexit. I don't care about the decision, really. It I don't know. I'm probably upsetting some of you saying that, but literally people don't know what they voted for anymore um, whatever happens stay leave whatever but the thing that gets me is that um, Theresa May wanted to remain but now she's doing everything to leave you know it's kind of one of the reasons some a lot of us hate her hate her but what can you do that's politics politicians are easy to hate than they are far more easier to hate than they are to love because they're just out of touch. Um, they're all out of touch, literally. They don't get what normal people go through because they might not have. Um, yeah, but Brexit is just another level of craziness in politics in the UK. Democracy, yeah, doesn't seem to be working. They're just all arguing amongst themselves instead of making a decision. Taking ages, almost as long as the new Tottenham Stadium, which is almost done. It'll be done before Brexit's done. Started around the same time. That's going to be funny. Be done first. We beat Brexit, yay. Anyway, it's going to be called the Nike Stadium, and I'm going there for the Tottenham Legends against Inter Milan forever next week, next Saturday um, and I'm there for the Palace game which will be the first home Premier League game at the new stadium the Nike Stadium, how weird is that? calling it the Nike Stadium um, and it's really high tech and it's going to be amazing it's like quality stadium I've heard a lot of people like fat Arsenal fans, Chelsea fans telling me how much they like the new Spurs Stadium Obviously, they don't like the fact that it's not their team, do they? But the fact that, like, the way it's been built and everything, the, the quality of that, they appreciate it. So that goes to show, if your enemies like it. <laughs> Got to be careful, though. Um, I mean, there's one there's one side of the, the stadium, which is like... Um, I don't know if you, you're familiar with the Dortmund Stadium, anyway. It's like, one side is like a wall of fans, literally. Like, a stand that goes all the way up like from first level to like third floor if you know what I mean so like all the fans will be on that side 
and it'd be quite an intimidating place to go um, for away teams, which is the idea of any stadium like that. So there's just going to be a wall of Tottenham fans on one side. Um, I can't wait, guys. We've been waiting too long for this new stadium. It's finally here. Finally, at last. Enough of that Wembley. But the journey will just be just as annoying because we need, I think we need some sort of like parking permit or something. If we're going to park on the street, like we have to apply for that from the the borough of Harringay, which Tottenham is in. Bloody annoying. Not not what you want to be doing. So hopefully we're, we're applying for parking, getting that sorted. We'll find out how it is when we go. Um, a lot of new organisational stuff, security, like you need see-through bags, which they've, they've, they've given me Tottenham see-through bags, official Tottenham bags, but carry everything in a see-through bag, which is a bit annoying, but hey-ho, we're at the new stadium, who cares? I've uh, already got my, like, my new season ticket passed through, it's like a card, literally you swipe it and then you're in, because it's like all electronically done, there's no like tickets made of paper anymore, it's literally electronic on your card. Swipe your card and you're in. Um, so yeah, I, I will vlog that of course. That'll be for another vlog. Um, but literally I've run out of things to say. So I'm just waffling now. Um, and of course England have been doing well recently. In the football. They won both games, 5-1. <laughs> Though we were 1-0 down against Montenegro the other day. Um, of course we've got some young players doing well. Sancho, hudson Odoi. All the Spurs players are still there, which I'm happy about. But Dyer is injured, and Ali's probably injured after this. I mean, D Eric Dyer hasn't played at all for a, for a while, like properly anyway. Um, he's been in and out of the team with injuries anyway. So to see him play for England and get injured is like annoying. Ronaldo got injured as well for Portugal. That's not good for Juventus. Um, and of course, Italy won as well. We've got a, a new young player. Um, originally from Ivory Coast, born in Italy, I mean his parents are Ivorian, and born in Italy and he scored on his debut. He's born in the year 2000. Do you, do you get how young he is then, he's like 18. So he's like one of the youngest to score for Italy on his debut. So that, that was great to see as well. Uh, but on this channel I'm sticking away from just focusing on football because not all of you like football. Um, and we will support different teams. So if I'm just chatting about Tottenham the whole time, it's going to not help with my subscriptions. Um, so I'm just trying to keep everyone happy, really. Um, but yeah, of course, I do vlog when I go football. Why not? Because it's such a great atmosphere, like most games, most stadiums around the world. Um, and the new stadium will be great, so I will vlog there, of course. How can I not? How can I not vlog there? But yeah, like I was saying at the beginning, I've been away a while. Hasn't felt like that long really, but maybe for you guys it has because you missed me. I know you will miss me so much. You were crying yourselves to sleep. Like, where is Louise's running one? Has he deserted us? No, I have not. <laughs> I was just on Netflix. Leave me alone. It's just life, in it? <laughs> but I think like, when you take a break and then come back, like from your guys point of view it's good because it's refreshing like and then you realize how much you miss me and then I get more subscriptions and more views but I do appreciate all you guys um, podcasts I'm back with the podcast hopefully the next one will be like next week because I did do a phase of like two or three weeks where I did two or three vlogs like once a week once a week I did a vlog um, but I didn't stick to that did I <laughs> It's a lot of work. I mean, if I'm honest, I'm not going to upload them to SoundCloud anymore because I've had no traction on there. I just, I don't know what's going on. Or I, I just check how to get more more listens on there. But anyway, I'm probably not going to, I'm not going to upload po podcasts on SoundCloud, only YouTube now. Maybe iTunes, but well, that means I have to upload it on SoundCloud to get on iTunes, but I don't know, even that is not, not working as well as I thought, but 
yeah, YouTube is the way. Um, and hopefully I can apply for the, uh, the monetization of my videos soon. So when I do get enough followers, enough views, I'll get paid properly. You know, <laughs> get my, my paycheck. Um, but I, I do, I will be honest, like, I applied for a few jobs in between. Of course, this is my sole purpose at the moment. These videos, YouTube, you know, making you guys happy. Because it makes me happy if you're happy. If, I mean, when I'm creating, I'm happy. So it's win win, really. It depends. It depends what type of video you want, but I'm, I'm here to stay. Here to stay, guys. Making these videos on the regs. As always. Louisa 21 forever <laughs> um, and yeah I want to make a lot more vlogs as well um, I want to I don't know I want to change something about the vlogs right? I mean yeah it just depends but as, as summer comes there's gonna be a lot more videos there's gonna be a lot more outdoor stuff going on of course I'm gonna have to vlog my Easter holiday to Italy um, that's going to be fun, guys, because we're doing a week in total. Um, we'll do three days in Lake Garda, which is one of those lakes in the north of Italy. Very famous, very beautiful. A bit like Lake Como as well. Um, same kind of area. And then we're in Milan with my relatives for a few days. Got some cousins there, my uncle and aunt. So, got some second cousins too, because my cousin has like two little kids. The second one was born recently, so... Yeah, there's a lot of new kids in the family. One of my other cousins is... Recently married and pregnant already. So we've got more kids on the way. <laughs> there's too many of us. It's like, I've got like 18 first cousins. If you didn't already know. And... So, Italy's just crazy every year. So we're doing this week in Milan. And of course in the summer we're going down again. As usual for a few weeks. To do the usual, the usual, the usual, all nighters, drinking, eating, beach, and no sleep, no rest for the wicked. And of course, I'm gonna be vlogging out there. I'm gonna have to. Why not? Um, that's the time where I really, I make make a few vlogs, but I actually step back on the the level of intensity of content I put out, like the the level of it. It's less intense the work I do over the summer, in Italy anyway, just because of time really. Can't get any time to edit, but I do film when I'm out there as you've seen. I remember, what was it, in my, the first summer I was on YouTube, I took my phone, I used my phone for vlogs, and there was that, like an app on my phone I used. I'd edit the, the videos ever so slightly, because it was a terrible app. They could barely edit videos, like literally. What you could do is like crop the videos. Couldn't really edit much. <laughs> Maybe not even text. But yeah, that was in my first in twenty seventeen, my first summer on YouTube. When I I didn't well I did have the GoPro but most of the time I used the uh, my phone, this app on my phone. And the screen was re like half the size it should have been to increase the quality of the films, which I couldn't change either. And there's a watermark on every video. Um, so that was annoying, but that was fun as well. Different style of vlogging. Of course, now I've got my second GoPro on the way. Use the DSLR. I've got so many. I've got this camera, this webcam that I use. So many different ways of filming. Different styles and approaches I can use. And at the beginning, it was just a GoPro, literally. I bought a GoPro and started vlog. Well, I had the GoPro for a bit. I bought it and I hadn't really used it properly had it from like the summer before never really used it and then once I started on YouTube it was just part of the the vlog game every day the GoPro is how I started I mean if you're new to using a camera the GoPro is something you can use to get you started you know get the basics out there learn the basics and then you can go on to bigger cameras from there if you feel like it it's entirely up to you really a bit of advice for anyone wanting to make movies um, and really, to to be a YouTuber, you got to take in other YouTube YouTubers' content. You got to watch it, um, but not just out, not 
force yourself to watch it. Watch vlogs that you enjoy in the, the style in the style that you like to watch, and then you get ideas from that. But you, of course, keep your ideas your own. You know, it, it's not called copying when you you develop an idea from someone else's idea and you change it, you twist it to your own way, in your own way, um, to suit your videos. Just don't don't copy things exactly, because if you copy it exactly, well, it won't be, it won't be as good as the original. Full stop. So just get ideas, but don't copy ideas. Um, that's what I've learned really, um, because there's are some YouTubers who literally copy others bit for bit, and it doesn't work. It would never work. I mean, a podcast gives you another like a view of of the of the YouTuber, of me in this case. Um, more personal, more focused on you know more in depth. Um, and the difference is that on a vlog, you could be a lot more energetic and you know put a lot more energy into less of it. But when you're doing a podcast, it's just in an hour or two of you talking, and you know, talking about different things, so it's it's different because you have to have longevity in that, and have to have some stamina in what you're saying. If you're just shouting down the mic for an hour, it doesn't work. You've got to be relaxed when you do a podcast. Much like me, wearing this ridiculous hat that looks like a condom for a. I don't, for what reason, I don't know. It, I, I never said it looked like a condom, my brother did. So oh, I'm not wearing it, he'll go out with me wearing that hat. What are you doing? Why'd you buy that? <laughs> and at first, I was like, maybe he's right, but I don't give a flying F, to be honest. Now I look at it, it looks really good, to be honest. Um, don't judge my hat. It's just a hat, guys. What has it ever done to you? just to match my yellow, my colour-coded yellow style today. Um, yeah. Yellow. I did go through a phase of uh, green. Like green and like dark brown. Uh, but now it's yellow. <laughs> yellow this year. Rocking the, the mellow yellow style of clothing. That's what I call it. <laughs> um, and that is probably it for today. Because I, I can see behind me the sun's coming out. I'm going to get out there, get a few rays, because I'm looking a bit pale. I'm feeling a bit pale. My mates the other day was like, you look a bit ill, mate. I was like, what? Look at yourself. Um, <laughs> good old Jose. Um, shout out to all of you. Thank you for the new subscriptions. I appreciate all of you very much. And I'm back, baby. Louise21 fan for life. And three, two, one.